Welcome to the Digital DJ Tips review of the Denon DJ SC5000 Prime Media Player. We've got two of them here alongside the X1800 mixer. This is the full Prime hardware uh, setup minus the record decks, which we are going to review separately. In fact, we're going to review the mixer separately as well today. We're going to concentrate on these media players and see if they're living up to the hype that they've had in the months leading up to getting them in our hands. So let's have a feature talk through of the unit. So we're going to start down at the bottom and move clockwise. So here we have our cue and play and pause buttons. They're hard plastic buttons. They work really nicely. These are the track skip and search. It's a beat jump function on here as well, which you don't get on Pioneer gear. The search is now relegated to holding shift and pressing these buttons. There's a sensor and reverse button here. Again, shift will kick in the reverse otherwise it's sensor. Now up here in the loop area the way this looping works is kind of borrowed from tractor and certainly borrowed from controller DJing. It's a lot simpler than the loop controls that you find on Pioneer units. There is the traditional manual loop in and out here as well. So by this screen, and we're going to come onto the screen separately, but by this screen on the left hand side, again this is all where you'd expect to find it, we have the, uh, the, the selecting of your source, input, USB, network and SD, uh, and then on the right hand side the traditional loading, so you've got your, um, you've got your uh, control here for picking your track, pressing it to load it, and then your back and forward buttons. So moving down this side, we've got a wheel adjust here. The jog wheel is capacitive, and you'll have seen it's got a screen in the middle. Uh, the screen in the middle is absolutely awesome. It can show album artwork, or it can show your logo. We've got the Digital DJ Tips logo on it. Really, really nice. Uh, but the wheel is capacitive, which means it isn't mechanical. You haven't got that mechanical feel to it, or the sound. You can hear that subtly silent. But nonetheless, you do have the adjust, the belt adjust underneath, which is just tightening it with a, with a belt underneath there, so you can get it to how you like it. So moving down, the vinyl, uh, the vinyl or CDJ feel button here, the sync button here with its master as well, uh, and then here's key lock, and then a really nice feeling pitch control, uh, which has got lights on it as well, which is something nice and new. So you've got a lock in the middle, and also the pitch doesn't move in that very middle bit there. So it's like an indent, but you don't actually feel the click. Uh, and then at the bottom here, uh, Den and DJ always likes to add pitch bends. So this is stop saving you having to touch the platter to bend the pitch, and also your pitch range is here using the shift button. So I've come all the way around to this bottom section, which is new for a media player, and this is a set of pads, just like you get on nearly every mid to high range DJ controller nowadays. They're laid out in one long row of eight, but otherwise they behave pretty much how you'd expect them to on a DJ controller. You've got hot cue, loop, two types of loop, roll and slicer. Here's your modifiers for uh, halving and doubling and shifting around and that kind of thing. And you've also got uh, that feel that you get on DJ controllers is very different to the feel on the, the little hard buttons on the Pioneer controllers that are no longer on this one up at the top here because the pads are all down here. So down the front here, we've got a USB slot and an SD card slot indented where the CD slot would be on a CDJ. Really nice idea. They're a little bit fiddly to get to, but of course your media is properly protected down there. It's not on the top where someone can knock it out or even steal it. So that's a really nice place to put those and a nice design change from traditional units. So around the back, here's our power input. The power button is here. There's a useful little arrow on the top to show you where it is when reaching around from the front. It's actually a standby and on button. So in other words, uh, if you want to really turn the power off, you can pull the power socket out. And in fact, if you do pull the power socket out, the music carries on playing for a bit. It's pretty cool. So what else have we got here? Well, we've got the link. This is a network link to put two players together. You put two players together and then you can play your media across them both. If you want to link more than two, you have to link them into the mixer, which is uh, which has got a hub built in. Or if you're not using a mixer with a built-in hub, you can just link them to an external hub. But if you want to link more than two players together, you can't just link them to each other uh, as you can do with two. So a little bit further on, there's a USB out. Now this is gonna be useful for third-party integrations, for instance, DVS. We know Serato is imminent with Clubkit, and I'm sure there'll be others, so for plugging a computer in. So a bit further on, there are two more USBs here, so you can have extra USBs fitted with more music. I think this would be really good for an installation, for instance, 
So if you've got a club chain that has a set music policy, that can be linked in to the club's library, a bit like the old days where they used to have the records at the clubs and DJs didn't have to turn up with them. You could have a, a house library plugged in there and then the DJ can turn up and plug his or her music in around the front. So over here, look at this. There are two RCA outputs there and two individual digital outputs. So that's indicating that there are two full outputs from this unit. This is one of the really big features of the unit because up here on the top is a button called layer. Now this means for the first time ever on a media player in a pro DJ booth without a laptop, you can play two pieces of music on one unit. This is absolutely revolutionary. It means with two of these, you have four real decks, something completely new. So the touch screen basically has two views. It has the performance view, which should be the top half of your screen if you were DJing with a laptop. And it has the library view, which should be the bottom half of your screen if you were DJing with a laptop. And so you're gonna use these two, uh, one to the other to the other as you're DJing, one to load your tracks, and then when your track's loaded, you're gonna have the other one playing, so you can keep an eye on the waveforms, you can keep an eye where you're setting your hot cues and all that kind of thing. So let's first look at the library display. Here we have our collection. Here we have our playlists. Here we have our prepare window, where you can swipe tracks like this to load and like this to prepare. So it's a bit like pulling the record sleeves out, which is why it's little icon has got a record sleeve pulled out and your prepare list is here. And once you load these tracks onto the deck, they disappear from the prepare list and then they load. Notice how it switched back to the deck automatically there. And it's really simple the way it works between the two. It will switch back when you're playing or you can just touch the button of the selected library function and it'll go back as well. So the switching between the two views is really intuitive. So you've got your library and you've also got your search function. Searching is something they've got really right on here. Finally, you click in here, a little keyboard pops up, you type in the name of the track you want and, it, and your results appear here. You can turn the keyboard off again there. So you've got your list. How do you sort in a list that you found, either a playlist or search results or whatever? Well, you can sort by album. That's the first one here. Second one here is by artist. Tap them again to reverse the sorting order. The third one here is by track title. And then we've got key and BPM. And you can alter in the preferences, something which we've looked into in a lot more detail in the review, the way it displays key and BPM information. In other words, how close to the original, whether it's the same key or compatible keys, and how close to the BPM do you want to show in your results? So let's have a little look at the preferences. You get to the preferences by holding down the view button here, and there's Two tabs here, preferences and utility. So preferences, there's an, a separate video for the Engine Prime software, which is Den and DJ's version of Rekordbox, which allows you to prepare your music to use on this player to its best advantage. So this window here, when you're exporting on your laptop, you get a window that looks exactly exactly the same as this with all these preferences in it. And that's one of the strengths of the system. On the laptop, it looks one way and then you load it onto here and hey, it looks exactly the same way. It feels like an extension of your preparation on the laptop and not a completely different system. So your preferences here for the way you'd like the player to work can be set on the player or they can be set on the laptop first and they'll just load in here. Now there's also a utility menu. This is specifically for the player itself. You can choose the player's number. You can choose whether, whether or not to have both decks playing. You can choose your screen brightness and there's a few things there about the firmware and the model uh, details as well. So as well as all that in here, we have shortcuts. This is awesome because when you arrive at the player, here you can just very quickly set some really cool stuff. You can set the color of the layer. Look at this. I mean, it might seem silly, but I bet you're gonna get addicted to that, setting it to how you want it. And by the way, while we're talking about the color of the layer here, just over on the mixer, when you have the compatible mixer, you have this color go on and off to show whether the deck is on air or not. It's just a little thing, but it's a really cool thing. And you can select your player number here and stuff as well. So this is basically the stuff that you might wanna do very quickly. So when you arrive at a player, hit shortcuts, set your stuff, and you don't have to go into the main preferences and utility menu at all. So let's switch back to track mode because there's a few things I want to show you there. I want to show you how two layers work or two decks on one unit. I want to show you how the time stretching work, cause, works because that's really awesome on this. And I also want to demonstrate slip mode to you because again, the way the, 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 the screen displays slip mode, slip mode is a mode where it lets you do stuff but the track plays underneath. 
and when you're finished, it starts playing again as if you hadn't touched anything. Uh, and the way it's displayed on here, the way it works on here, is pretty cool. So let's have a look. We'll switch back here to this mode and hit play. Uh, so here's the currently selected layer, and you can see the deck color here, the one we selected a minute ago, actually. And if I press the layer button, the button and the deck color changes to the, the color chosen for the second deck on here. And now the waveform has stopped because we haven't started this one playing. And in this area here, the currently selected deck is slightly dominant over the other one. Let me press that button and keep an eye on the bottom here. You see now the bottom one is switching with the top one for dominance. So I'm going to hit play now on the deck that isn't playing. Uh, and the other deck, hit sync, keep those together. In fact, let's take out the top deck. So we've now mixed over to the second deck, all on one player. While I wouldn't recommend trying to DJ on only one player, it's a lot more fun with two. I, I hope you can see that that's pretty awesome. So the second thing I wanted to show you was slip mode. Now slip mode does what I explained and we can turn it on by pressing the slip button here. Now with slip mode engaged, if I do anything like stop the deck, the deck plays away, you see it split the waveform to show me where it would have been had I not done that. And then when I press it again, it takes over again. Really cool, really nice visual representation. Now we've got a piano line. Pianos are traditionally really hard to time stretch because they just start sounding awful. So let's have a really close listen to the way the time stretch algorithm deals with this. And I've set it to a really high plus minus 50%. Listen to those strings and listen to how smooth they are, even when we slow down already by 20%. Just starting to lose it there at a full 40% down. And of course it's going to be good in the other direction as well. Now that is an absolutely awesome multi-genre tool because you can start mixing and sounding really good across all kinds of BPMs. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that's making all this happen. That stuff I've just demonstrated to you could not happen on a media player, on any DJ machine that hasn't got an awful lot of power in it. This has actually got a multi-core processor system in it. It's got a computer built into it. So that computer can do all the cool stuff I've already showed you, but also it can do things like when you, if you accidentally unplug your USB, it won't just put a weedy little four beat loop, it'll actually play the whole track as if nothing's happened. That track's currently playing. Let's unplug the USB. Media not ejected properly. Ah, okay, right, what do we do? Well, we just hit that button there and our track's still playing. I've still got full control over it. I've still got control of my hot, hot, hot cues, my loops, everything here. It's still working as if that's plugged in. So I can work out the problem, I can get that plugged in again. I've got all the track to do it just as well, eh? There we go, it's plugged in again. The player just carries on where it left off. That kind of power is because it's got a computer built in. Now I want to explain something else to you about this player. If you plugged in a USB as I just did there, with just a load of tunes randomly thrown on it, this player, as you load them onto the deck, will do what DJ software does. It will analyze the track, takes a few seconds, and then all the stuff I've just been showing you will work with that music. When you load another track, it will work with that as well, and another one. So in other words, you could turn up with a whole collection that you've never shown to a computer before, you've never analyzed, you've never done any work on, and you have the key information, the BPM information, it'll have worked out beat grids, it'll have done all the clever stuff that software DJs uh, are used to, and that DJs on gear like this in DJ booths have got used to when they've taken the time to prepare at their home on, on software without you having to do that. Now that's not the ideal way of using it, but it does mean that if you do have tracks that you haven't had time to analyze yet, you can get that key information, you can get that beat grid, and you can sync mix them and do all the clever stuff with them on the fly. Again, it's because there's a computer built into these units that they can do that, and it's one of the defining factors of this unit. It's one of the reasons why it's such a big leap forward. 
Now there's a lot more to this unit than we've had time to talk through in this short video. Everything is written up over on the main review on the website. So please, if you want more about some of these features, go in there. I do want to zoom in on one of the features, particularly here though, which is the performance pads, because they're going to be completely new to people who've come from the pro booth using gear that doesn't have these. Equally, if you're used to controllers and software, they do it a little bit differently to the way you might be used to. So let's have a look at how they work on this unit. So I'll press play at the beginning of this track here and we'll talk through the hot cues, which is the one that's selected here. So hot cues just put a cue point down that is saved with the track. I'm going to set a new one here. I've also got one at the beginning already. That'll take me right back to the beginning. And that one is the one I set a second ago. I can set them all the way through the track that way. And you can name them as well if you do them in the software before getting to the unit, but you can also do them uh, as I did there on the fly in the unit. And to delete a hot cue, you hold down the shift button, press the hot cue. So I've got no hot cues set here now. I can set another one here. There we go, there's a new one set. So hot cues are reasonably simple, even if you've only seen them uh, on players like this before, because that's pretty much the same functionality. Now let's move over to loop. So loop will save any loops that you've got running. So for instance, let's set a loop running here on the encoder. I'll set, say, a, uh, uh, set an eight beat loop. There you go, there's an eight beat loop set there. And I can press any of these blank loop slots and it will save that for me. That's now saved on there. I can turn that loop off. That'll play away. And then I can press this slot again, it'll go back to the loop. There we go. And I can get out the loop again by pressing exit there. So there's another loop mode as well here. By pressing that button again, the whole lot turns green. And this is what uh, you'd, you'd know as a traditional loop roll if you were a controller DJ. So I'll, I'll show you the effect. Not a loop roll that will change the world of DJing that, but you know what I mean. Uh, now the funny thing about that one is actually, the slip mode would normally, with a loop function like that, play the track underneath while you were doing it, and when you finished, it would carry on from where it was. For some reason, it doesn't in that mode. Uh, so I think that should, but that's, uh, that's my opinion on that one. Okay, so now we have roll. So this is similar to what I just showed you, but you do have the slip mode turned on. And because the different colors here um, are, are, are that way, it suggests something that is slightly different, and there is indeed. So let's press play here, and I'll show you. If I was to play the green ones, That's pretty standard loop roll stuff, but these ones here sound a little bit different. They've got a kind of bit, bit more syncopation to them. Kind of change the rhythm of the whole piece a bit. The reason for that is that they're triplets. So these are musical triplets. They're not one quarter, one half, one beat. They are the triplets in between those areas. So they're kind of an advanced musical thing. And it's nice to see them on here because I've never seen them on a loop roll before. So that's kudos to, uh, to Den and DJ there. And the final thing we've got here, which I'm not going to demonstrate, is called a slicer. It takes eight beats of your track and lets you say, oh, go on, let's have a go, let's demonstrate it. So it's got eight beats of your track flashing here. The reason I don't demonstrate it is I've never found a use of it that sounds good to me. But, uh, but anyway, that's probably my, my, my failing. So it's these eight, beats are flashing along here and I can chop them up by pressing the individual buttons. Actually you can hear you can hear the, the effect there, you can hear what's going on. And if you press the slicer button again, it changes colour and that gives you a toggle between the slice, if you like, the slice that you're affecting being in one place or moving through the track with the effect. So there's two little variations on Slicer there. And again, it's quite a, a modern, modern thing that. It's only appeared on DJ controllers and software recently. And to see that coming down into a unit like this, just another demonstration of the processing power going on in this, which is completely new to the Pro DJ booth without a laptop. Access.
her cold love strike. So the hands you saw there and the scratching you heard was Steve, our scratch tutor. Um, and for all you scratch DJs out there, which isn't me, Steve confirms that it is really cool to scratch on, right, Steve? The, uh, there's no latency going on there because it's all kind of on board and tested, so you're not worrying about your computer letting you down when you're getting into intricate stuff. The actual feel of it's nice because you've got the wheel adjust, as we talked about earlier, and the top feels like a piece of seven inch vinyl. It's even got grooves on it, which again, is just really nice uh, for getting advanced with it. And you know, that really sums up what it's like to play with. This is an awful lot of fun for all the reasons we've been talking about. It feels dependable, but it also feels pretty ambitious and it also feels very powerful, which is what that processor on board gives you. We've had not only us, but many of the digital DJ staff team have either been here, um, like they just turned up randomly to do something and ended up having a play, or they've been telling us over our remote systems that they really wish they were here. And to be honest, we've spent more time messing around uh, than we have uh, kind of writing and filming for this review which I guess is a good thing it's given us a feel for the gear and we've also had a lot of fun with it so I think it's fair to say that we like these devices we think that the mix of very traditional layout that isn't going to scare the DJs who they've got to win over off along with the way that the modern features have been tastefully built in including the real centerpiece, which is that wonderful touchscreen, bringing everything that we love from our phones and our iPads and so on straight into DJ Gear is indeed a big game changer. DJ Gear has really lagged behind controllers and software for a decade now. It's the reason we started Digital DJ Tips because we could see this coming. So for us in particular, it's really exciting to see DJ Booth Gear minus a laptop coming up to the speed of the stuff that all us controller and software DJs have known for a long time. I was chatting to laid back Luke, Luke about this gear and he said, you know, I just didn't realize that software had all this stuff. We were talking about the pads and the slices and so on. And the fact that, you know, DJs at the top of their game are having, or at least have had to use until this point, gear that doesn't have the things that we're used to as controller DJs kind of seems mad. So we love the fact that it's now appearing and you can rest assured that the other names making this kind of gear are gonna be rushing to get their versions of this kind of stuff out, which makes it a very healthy and a very interesting time for DJing. And yes, this is a game changer. It's not only the best way of DJing without a laptop at the moment, but we think it's probably the best way of DJing at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed the review. If you found it useful as ever, please do subscribe uh, and join. You've got the links to do that below and around me and I'll see you again very soon.